We are now going to begin the question and answer phase of our debate. Let me give you a brief overview as to how it will work because it can sometimes get a little confusing. We will have one question asked by each debater of the other. Each debater will have one minute to frame the question. The person being asked the question will have three minutes to respond. The questioner will then have two minutes to rebut that response. And then the original person who was asked the question will then have one minute to rebut the rebuttal. And then we'll reverse it all. There will be one question for each individual. And then we will have six minute closing statements from each of the debaters to conclude our debate this evening. We will begin with Dr. Brown asking a question of Dr. Choquette. He will have one minute to phrase his question. Dr. Choquette will then have three minutes to respond to the question. Dr. Brown, your question, sir. This time pressure really makes life interesting, I'll tell you. Uh, Rabbi Choquette, I know that you do not believe that Jesus was born of a virgin, that he died for the sins of the world, that he rose from the dead, that he is the true Savior and Messiah. Uh, you've refer referred uh, in the past to John 14, 6, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me, the words of Jesus, and called it the foulest, most abusive sentence ever uttered in the all of human literature, which makes Hitler's mind conf look like a nursery rhyme. I say that to reinforce the strength with which you believe these things. How then can it be fine for Gentiles around the world to follow Jesus as Savior and Lord? Isn't the role of Israel to be a light to the nations? Isn't Israel called to proclaim his glory to the nations? Isn't it part of the role of the servant of the Lord to bring the world into the knowledge of God? How then can you say Christians can follow this Jesus? Christians can follow this Jesus. Christians can follow whatever they want in so far that they keep this as their personal faith the same as any other adherents of any other faith group or any other religion can go and practice whatever they feel like. I will draw the line, however, when their actions or their beliefs will touch anybody else. If you want to believe that you have the one and only faith and no man cometh unto the Father except through me, go right ahead, be my guest. But don't you dare go and pass this personal belief, this personal leap of faith on to somebody else by telling them this is truth. It, that's all it is, your belief. And if you try to get somebody else to believe that, that's the no different than going around peddling dope. That you can turn on somebody by promising instant salvation, instant heaven, by this is the way to God, when you have absolutely no way in the world to prove that. You have absolutely no foundation for that. You have no substantiation for that. You want to believe it? You want to follow it? Go ahead. But stay away from others. Don't try to pass on others. The same as you don't want me to go around and convince somebody uh, to go into promiscuity and convince him that that is right because I believe so, to take drugs because I believe that's perfectly okay, to commit certain crimes because I believe that is uh, okay. Likewise, don't you go around and do the same with that article. That's all. Well, in response, let me say that uh, you still haven't addressed my question. Isn't it the role of Israel to be a light to the nations? Isn't it the role oh, of I'm the servant then. of okay, the no, Lord? I still have a minute, well, uh, let, let me take my two, and then you get yours. No, no, I said in that case I still had a minute and a half. I'm left. sorry. So, glad, so I'll add it to the yes. Okay, go ahead. No, why, why don't you continue this way? I can rebut your rebuttal. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Which we'll try to do anyway. Yes. Okay, okay uh, Dr. Shurkett, we would normally just, uh, once you, you complete a, a time period, we don't transfer okay. that time on, but if you'd like to have one more minute to finish your response, please do so. Now or later? Right now would be fine. Okay, right now, okay. Uh, Israel is supposed to be enlightened to the nations precisely by living up according to that which God dictated to them. Not that I have to go around proselytizing. When the Messiah will come, all mankind will serve God, but they will not become Jews. There will still be Jews and Gentiles. There will still be that distinction. But all mankind will serve God in unison. Uh, that in a day, God will be accepted by all mankind. And how are we going to get them? Now we are supposed to do so by living up according to the Torah. If we don't do so, we are failing. That's exactly our problem. Uh, when the Messiah will come, then this will be a foolproof system that the Jews will indeed live up according to the Torah, according to what the Bible prescribes for us. The Gentiles will see that. They will emulate our role model, and they will follow this as well, while still remaining Gentiles. Just so that everyone understands, Dr. Brown, you will now have a two-minute response, and Dr. Choquette, you'll have a one-minute rebuttal. 
Uh, first, although you continually speak of this being a leap of faith that I take, having no proof, having demonstrated nothing, I'm pleased that we have all of this available for people to go through and look at carefully to see which of us, if either, are in fact taking a leap of faith. However, I would say that to say that there is absolute truth is not an arrogant personal thing. To say that I must be right because I believe it, that's arrogant, but to say that God has absolute truth, that there's one God, that God has given absolute truth to Israel, we would believe that. You as a rabbi would want Jews here to come back to what you call tradition. You would think that's imperative. What if I said that's your personal belief? Keep it to yourself. You say, but I, I want Jews to know why. Because we have absolute truth. We have one God. We have one scripture. Isn't that important? The fact that Jews keeping Torah is a light to the nations, no, no way. How is it a light to the nations of Jews living in Brooklyn, for example, or in Mea Sharim in Jerusalem, or keeping Torah? 99.999% of the world won't even ever meet them, see them, know them. No, it says in the Psalms and other passages, proclaim his glory to the nations. Interestingly, one of the last things that the late Lubavitcher Rebbe began to do was send out emissaries to educate the Gentiles in what are the so-called seven laws of Noah, and as Lubavitch has explained to me, that they felt a burden to educate Gentiles in certain precepts. Although I differ with what they were teaching, I would say that the approach, in fact, is right. That Jews were to go. And if you want to take the words of Jesus in Matthew 23, he said that those Pharisees were very active going out and trying to proselytize people and win them over to Judaism. Since you quoted his words with some authority before, I just refer you to that. I say it behooves us as Jews to warn idolaters about idolatry. It behooves us as Jews to let the world know if they're worshiping a false savior, a false messiah. Don't say, it's okay, believe in him, he's a myth, never, never did what he's supposed to do. Nonsense. But go ahead and believe in him. No. You have a one-minute response. Um, one minute. Uh, first of all, when we say, when we look at Christians, we do not look at them as idol worshippers. That's number one. A Jew who would accept Jesus would be worshipping idolatry. A Gentile who accepts Jesus is not worshipping idolatry. In Judaism there's a concept which is called shituf, to associate other powers to God. A Jew is not allowed to do that, as in the, the verses from Deuteronomy that I quoted earlier. Uh, for a Gentile, however, for as long as a Gentile accepts the supremacy of God, the Almighty, if he wants to believe that God works through an intercessor or has some other intermediary powers, there's nothing in the Torah, in the Bible, forbidding a Gentile to believe that. There's nothing wrong with that. So therefore, I do not have to move a Christian away from that faith. As long as he believes in God and as long as he believes in the basic morality of that which God has prescribed for all mankind.